Greetings, listeners. I am your host for the evening, Zach Barrett, and welcome to this Twisted Gear Studios production. You are about to listen to The Call, our Call of Cthulhu actual playcast GM'd by Derek Snow. The previous report from our investigators. Our investigators returned alive and with evidence of Albert Gall's involvement with the Church of Contemplation, an old patient of Agatha's from the asylum. They regroup at the mansion to look over Albert's journal. Before I start off in the morning, um, just for the previous night, I don't need much to go by, but I'm pretty sure if I start with Agatha, after the knowledge of who you encountered... And my experience with the book. And people talking, asking you questions about it. I believe you said you were going to go to the bar and have some drinks. Yes, I did. Which is completely <laughs> fine. Um, Althea, I believe you... I just... Or what you would yeah. like to be doing that. Yeah. That night, just so... If there's She's, anything out of the ordinary, who who had the book when we were when we left? Uh, uh, I Althea had it. Althea mm-hmm. had it. Yeah. Okay, because yes. yeah. I mm-hmm. was the last one to be looking at it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go down to breakfast. If anyone else is there, oh boy, the Berkey. Uh, okay. Yeah. And I believe uh, Althea, did you try to read the book? Um. By, when I was by myself? Yeah. No. Or you wouldn't look, care to look at it during the night? Well, it's uh, not a yellow so, book. No. I, yes. I still would have been more preoccupied with books I already own. <laughs> and you also, for some reason, you don't uh, ever feel an overwhelming need lately since you received the coin mm-hmm. um, with the weird twisted star symbol on it um, from Mr. Black. Uh, you don't really feel the need to read The King in Yellow, but you also don't really want to be super parted from it. No, I'm you want just, to know where it is. I'm at just all times. decided that uh, writing that play has just got to kind of be put on the back burner for now because I have some other things I need to take Burr. care of. <laughs> Stop! Oh, God. Just, oh. Dark, the king in yellow. Oh, God. Dark yellow. Oh. All right. So what? it's in the morning. We're we're in the the dining hall. Uh, I is there a newspaper? Okay. So first off, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Um, at the moment, everyone. Uh, actually, not everyone. Uh, Amos and Marion, you're both in the dining hall first. Um, Amos, as you're walking in, you do notice that there's a table uh, laid out with... Uh, you know, you usually see these in hotels and stuff where they have the table with a pile of different newspapers laid out across them. Good God. Yeah, so there is a variety of different of newspapers. Of course there is. Yeah. Uh, I want to take uh, a couple of them and I just want to see if there's any news report about... Um, if there's anything in the news about any shootings or anything that happened around the area of the Church of Contemplation. It's uh, perfect. Um, you can take that. I'm going to call for a library use from you in a second. So perfect. you can get your dice ready as I move on to Marion. Of course, you and Amos showed up around the same time. Um, there's a nice spread laid out. Um, you don't know where the food came from, of course, because you haven't really seen any servants bring it out or anything. The staircase <laughs> is over there. <laughs> yeah. It's behind that But there's tapestry. the muffins and the juice and stuff like that. You do notice that there always used to be two... Um, jugs of orange juice but over the last little while there's only ever one jug of orange juice and there seems to be some gone from it whenever you show up for breakfast oh, oh my God. <laughs> it seems like they're, they're hitting on an orange juice uh shortage shortage someone someone like, is is having quite a bit of orange juice seriously concerned done. about getting scurvy yes. apparently mm-hmm. <laughs> yes look what you've all done you've made a monster out of skis <laughs> If that's if that's the only thing he's well, we actually don't know. Never mind. I wasn't wow. gonna say anything. Skin anyway. saint, leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, libraries? No, sorry. Oh yeah, yes. Go go ahead and roll your libraries. No, 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 no. Seventy three out of sixty three. Oh wow, wow. that sucks. Deja vu. <laughs> so, <laughs> as we, uh, Marion. So, um, did you want to be doing anything other than just grabbing some food? Oh yeah, I'm just there? grabbing some food. If. Uh, if no one else shows up I'm at, uh, for a little while, I, there are some other things I'm going to do. I'm going to wait. For this. If, yeah, if so nobody shows up for a while, then I'm going to go see uh, if um, uh, Althea is with Simon. But if she shows up, okay. I'll, I'll, Althea will show up for breakfast. Oh, okay. breakfast room at one point. Oh, okay, and I'll <clears throat> flow that. 
Um, so you're just basically going to grab some food and sit down, yeah. and you're only going to, by the time you're done eating, if nobody else has shown up, you will yeah. probably head off to try to track somebody down. Yeah. Like, I'll flip through the newspaper or whatever, but I'm not, but I'm not looking for anything in particular. Yeah. Uh, Amos, you seem to be scanning through the newspapers as you're grabbing a coffee and a lot of breakfast meats. Yeah. You're just really in the mood for some sausage, some bacon, um, uncooked Stunning. meat, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever floats his boat. Is there uncooked meat at this table? No, 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 no. I was no. going to say. You just wait, think what? that they're, as you're eating your breakfast meat, you're feeling like, oh, this is just overcooked. All of these things are so overcooked. You know, the chefs here are usually a lot more on it. What are you talking about? Oh, it's just, uh, oh, seems like it could do with being in the oven a little less. I... Personally, I have no reason to complain. This is an amazing. Just the fact that they've put it out for us is amazing. No, it's a fair point. I'm not. I'm not. It's just. It's just different. I don't know. I give him. And where's the missing missing orange juice jug? I don't, I don't know. As at this point, as you're talking about, you you now Amos, you notice as well. Why is that so much less orange juice? I don't <laughs> know what's happening. Um, at this point, Agatha, you walk in. Of course, you're feeling a little bit hungover. Um, just roll me a constitution oh, check, no. actually. Um, yes. Just to see how you're feeling. 63 out of 70. Okay, so, I mean, you're still hungover, but not debilitatingly so. No, but, like, uh, this, like, okay. Does yeah, but you can act as however you will. As you walk in uh -huh. um, for breakfast and you see Amos and Marion, anything you would like to do? Uh, oh, God. Can someone close the curtains, please? You notice that the uh, curtains are already closed. Are they? Yeah, but that makes much more fun. <laughs> uh, Agatha, why don't you sit down? I'll get you. I'll get you some coffee. Water. Yeah. Coffee. Well, I'll get you a coffee. Oh my god. I pour a coffee, and when I put the mug next to her, I make a definite intention to have a hefty thud on the table as I put it next to her. Oh my. That's awful. Did you uh, have a good time define, last night? Define good time. I don't think I need to. And mm. I sip my coffee. And I'm going to pour myself a shaky black. I don't usually drink my coffee black, but today it's black. <laughs> 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 and just try and bring it down. Well, the first thing you notice as you grab the coffee to fill up the mug, of course, Amos had already filled up the mug with coffee. Oh, and no. <laughs> Um, so you don't really spill it everywhere, but you notice in the last second, and for some reason you're like, you're, and you're like, Ugh. oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah. You want some, uh, I shake the flask before I pour some into my coffee cup? No, she doesn't. I think she said uh, think quite she enough of that. The question. I'm actually going to take it. <laughs> I'm going to take a big swig of it. I just roll my eyes at both of them and go back, back to my newspaper. And start drinking my coffee. And I kind of shake the flask at you, uh, Marion. I continue to ignore him. <laughs> That's fair. That's, That's fair. about right. Whiskey coffee. And uh, at this point, um, Althea, now of course, just mm -hmm. to back some of Althea, um, you do recall that the book that you found in the church, the mm -hmm. journal, Abergol's journal, yep. if you will. Um, a lot of crazy little writings and stuff on it, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so you walk into the breakfast ballroom, the BBR. Okay, um, Althea comes in, she looks a little bit tired and, and worn out and stuff, but she comes in <clears throat> dressed for the day, but she is carrying the journal and her own book that she puts down on the table. So do you have the journal and the book like in your hand like you're going to school? Do you have your little... Yeah, I'm just carrying it. Okay. And I just enough. put it on the table. Sure. Um, like you expect that I'm probably going to open up and read it or something but I go and I get a, a coffee and stuff and I sit down and then they just sit there. Anything, I don't actually uh, open them up. I'm going to see I'm going to see Albert's journal and just kind of like go, ah, fuck. Like I just don't want to be kind of near it but I haven't left the table. Like I'm just not... No good vibes from that thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm not opening them up or anything. They're just kind of with me. Okay. Yeah. Althea, mm -hmm. uh, do you mind? There were some. Uh, in, there were just some, some odd writings in that journal. Uh, in addition, we, there was. We definitely know there was the address, but there were some writings that we couldn't decipher. I was wondering, would you mind if I if I take a look at it today? I don't know if we had plans for the day. Um, no, you go ahead and take it. I'll give her the journal. 
Thank um, you. Just kind of keeping my hand on the other book. Mm-hmm. I'll hand it over, but I still don't do anything with it. It's just mm-hmm. there. I well, copy out the address into my notebook uh, while I'm doing so. I'm just going. To, I'm just going to say, I, I just, there's something about this that I, I feel like there's more to this story. Uh, so so there's this something we need to follow up on. I don't know if anyone is up for for a trial night after yesterday's fiasco, but. If so, this is then this address is somewhere we could go to. Otherwise, Althea, if you don't mind, I'd like to use your library and see if I could uh, find more information about some of these symbols. Uh, you can go ahead. It's at your disposal. So the, one of the main things, um, just to clarify, when you reached and grabbed the journal, you had like a static electricity shock Ooh. that came from the, the journal. You know what I mean? When you touch something, yeah. it's like a little bit of a shock. And then, I mean, I mean, it happens so often. Yeah. Shrug it uh, off. Yeah, my only suggestion would be, if, well, while we're out and about, if we wouldn't mind swinging by my old apartment. You could even do that before we leave. It's up to you guys. It's not really imperative. I wouldn't mind being able to... I don't think we need to go back to the Church of Contemplation at all, but I did take a number of photos of Albert's nest, for lack of a better term, up in the in the bell tower, so be good to review that and see if there's any clues to his whereabouts or what he's been up to the past little while if we can help have that if any of that information can help figure him out at all Uh, i'll come with you i mean like i've worked with the man maybe i have a little bit more insight on that one well i'm just gonna grab my 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 tools from my apartment there's actually Mm -hmm. a a studio here that i can process the photos in i just want to use my own equipment i just need fresh air just let me come well you can come with me but we'll do the studying here. Fantastic. Amos, I did want to ask, uh, while we're out and about today, it might be a good idea to at least inform uh, the police or a coroner or someone about what we found there, just so those people could find some peace. Someone mm. to someone to bury them, That's... someone to say a few words. Wouldn't they just... Well, that, wouldn't that put suspicion on us? I mean, like, we found it. Could we? That's I why can, I asked Amos. I could you not to my talk to f- someone anonymously? I, I can talk to Bill. It, it, we, if we don't make a formal, if we make a formal report, you're completely correct. It, it makes us look absolutely guilty. But Bill and I have been friends for years. I'll just drop an anonymous hint with him. He'll keep it under wraps, and then, yeah, that's a good idea. And Agatha, you've worked with this man before. Uh, is he likely to go back? I'm just sort of flipping through the journal, mm-hmm. looking to see if there's any other. Because there's the one address. Is there, are there any other drawings? Are there okay. any other notes? Um, so as you sort of flipping through it, you notice that it almost makes you a little bit dizzy. Mm. The way the symbols seem to be curled around the pages and the way the writing is. And it seems as you're, as you're flicking through it, you know, quickly, um, you, just, you just get a little bit nauseous. Just, just it's like vertigo. It's Mary, stop looking through the book. I mean, uh, this, is, this, this is not, nothing's good kind of come from this book. Uh... Okay, but uh, sorry, you, because of the because of just Mr. because Gull? of him. Just put it down. Just put it down. It's it, you know, I'll you know it, you're right. Breakfast is not the best time for this. I'll co- I'll get back to it later, and I just take a sip of of tea. I think I might um, take some time today and um, go down and check on Simon. I haven't been down there. For a little bit and oh has has cadbury said anything is there any news uh no he hasn't said anything to me but i'm just gonna go down he, he's probably down there and maybe relieve him let him go get some rest and just kind of i don't know just um yeah hang out there for a little bit well uh i will grab a coffee i'm sipping as i go and put a new suit front of my arm I'm going to go with, I want to talk to you about the whole Simon situation, actually. I've got a couple questions from some photos I was taking, so. Sure. Like, whenever you're ready, and I'll just, um, get up, finish my coffee, have not actually eaten any real food, and just scoop up the book and just go out. She, take, she takes nothing with her? I just take my book with me. That's the, it. The which book? The yellow, king and yellow book. Okay, yeah. perfect. I will... Uh, pour a second cup of coffee, and I will bring two cups of coffee downstairs. Okay, mm-hmm. so one with whiskey is mine. The one without whiskey is not mine. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Amos and Althea, you head down to the 
I guess, hospital. <laughs> yeah. The hospital ballroom, the HBR. <laughs> oh, oh my no. God. The BBR, the HBR, they all have interesting okay. names. Don't yeah. know why I'm talking like that. I'll head down. Is there the ABC I'll, uh, one? <laughs> I'll go down, I'll Ball take chamber. the book, and I'll put it away in one of the multitude of drawers and stuff that I have there. And uh, I'll take out, you know, whatever they have, 1920s. Surgical apron, okay. magician's apron, coroner's apron. Okay. Malat. So- <laughs> Lab dress. It says Wednesday on it. <laughs> okay, so you're not actually, you're heading down there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so when so- I get there, I'll, that's what I'll do. <laughs> your Wednesday. Okay, apron. so uh, you uh, head on down the stairs into mm-hmm. the hospital thing. Of course, Amos, you right mm-hmm. behind uh, Althea, and you notice, um, both of you notice, mm-hmm. um, Simon still lied across the the bed um and cadbury's sitting on a chair seems to be facing simon just seems to be sitting on a chair there so you just see the back of him mm-hmm. um while i'm putting away the book and putting on my apron thingy i'll say to cadbury go and get some rest i'm sure i'm assuming there's been no change again at all so as you're going down um, you see Cadbury, and then you ask him if there's any change or anything. Cadbury seems to be a little bit startled by somebody talking to him, and he doesn't seem to have been doing anything out of the ordinary. And, uh, of course, not like uh, when Amos, of course, you're familiar, when you came down, you saw Skeet down here. It's nothing along those lines where you think that, you know. That was awkward. That was, <laughs> would have been a little bit awkward. Um, but Cadbury sort of just looks over, and he stands up, and he's like, oh, uh, good morning, ma'am. No, uh, nothing seems to have changed in his condition um no nothing really has changed in his condition at all it's really strange really it is quite strange yeah strange how well uh <laughs> yes <you're, laughs> well uh the more that i'm spending down here with um with simon um i've only ever really seen something like this once before uh, I mean, you've seen something like this once before? Yeah, because um, it doesn't seem to be like a, a normal coma situation. It just he appears to be sleeping and is not waking up. Um, just, I mean, he's not really reacting to any outside influence or anything else. Reminds me of um, a small... Uh, when we were in a, when me and my platoon was it, were in a uh, small French town during uh, World War One. Yeah. Oh, wait, hang on a sec. You went to a small town of France, World War One, and you saw this? Well, no, it was this small town, and apparently um, it was actually quite a... I don't know how to put it. It was, it was so surreal and strange, but it seemed there was nobody left in the town. It seemed that the Germans had came in and uh, done some kind of uh, medical research or whatever they were doing to these poor people. Um, and in a church uh, that was there, there was a, like a one real survivor. I, I really don't want to get into some of the stuff we found in the town, but um, lying across like a, like a stone table, I don't know how else to put it, in this church was a, yeah, it was, was a young, young man who seemed to be sort of in the same, asleep, couldn't be woken up and everything did he look like he was a volunteer or a prisoner? Oh, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I believe that because we weren't really a c- civilian soldier. It tell? was a, it was a soldier. German, French. Well, uh, we assumed at the time that it could have been uh, a German, but I mean, so. It was a German experiment on one of their own? Yeah, that's the way it seemed. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. And it was the same thing that's going on here. Well, it was just somebody who isn't reacting to outside stimulus, who just seems to be sleeping and couldn't be woken up and skin being cold, and cold to the point where you'd figure there would be a problem. I touch Simon's skin very, very, very subtly, and do I notice there, like, a, is his skin cold? Uh, no, you don't, uh, notice, uh, really it doesn't seem like there's any temperature shift at all. Did, 
Did any uh, platoons go in after you? Do you know what happened to that environment after the fact? Uh, what happened to the poor gentleman that was on the table? Um, so military intelligence uh, came in and took over the whole area, and we were moved off to the next objective. Um, so I'm not really sure what happened. They never told and you that? Right? No, they, they, they have no need to. Hierarchy-based system. Um, need to know right. basis. So, uh, yeah. And at this point, I'm just going to go upstairs to the BBR. My breakfast BBR. ballroom. BBR. <laughs> um, <laughs> where we have uh, Marion and Agatha. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, sit, still sitting down at the breakfast. Look, finishing up breakfast. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you guys would like to be doing? I don't think you should be looking at that book, Marion, now I've, that I think about it. <sighs> I've opened it and up and I'm flipping through it again. What? Oh, sorry, what? I really don't think you should be looking at that book. I'm, I'm just, I'm checking to see what these symbols, they're just, I don't know, looking at them feels strange. They don't make sense. It doesn't seem to be English. Did he speak other languages? I, so when, in his report, when we found him after he had uh, basically maimed his employer. Um, when they found him, he did have scarring and symbols cut into his body with the scissors. Into himself? He, yeah, he, he self mutilated oh. himself. Now, I. He's messed up. He's just. He, he obviously. That's not the scientific term, but I mean, like, he's just. You don't want to get into his head. Marion, you don't. It's it's a spiral. It, you just will get caught up into it. I highly suggest just put the book down. Just don't look at it. Just take a break from it, please. Just put it. And I'm and I'm getting really as a character, I'm kind of getting a little agitated because I this is all coming back to him attacking me. It's kind of almost like PTSD from from what had happened. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna not grab the book, but I'm gonna kind of hold onto her hand and try to like force the book down and away from her reading it. So, uh, uh, well, if it will make you feel better, I can I can take this into the library. I just no no no. That's not. I just don't want you reading it. It's it's a dangerous book because he's book? a dangerous person. I understand he's dangerous. It, it what what he did to those people, but the there's nothing sensible written in here there's it's just there's a, i don't i looked at it yesterday just something happened i just don't like this book and i won't and i go to try and take it from her okay uh marion are you resisting yeah because she's i don't think she should have this book <laughs> oh okay you know i think here let me Okay, so how forcefully are you going to try to take the book? I'm going to have it like both, you know how like when a book is open, I'm going to have both hands on either side, like just trying to pull it towards me. Right, so, and if Marion gives resistance, are you going to try to pull it out of her grasp? Yes. That's an opposed strength roll. Okay. Okay. You'll probably win. I don't, I'm not very strong. <laughs> As you just try to yank it. Ooh. Huh. <laughs> 60, is that the right? No, that's not. That's an eight. Where's my... There it is. Okay, I actually passed that one. Uh, 29 out of 40. Oh, 33 out of uh, 60. <laughs> <laughs> so you both had regular successes. Yeah. Okay. Which means you're both sort of in a stalemate. Okay. <laughs> as uh, you're both sort of pulling the book back and forth between you. Yeah. Um, before another check is made, is there anything that would like to be said more? Like... Give me this or whatever, whatever way you Mary, want. Mary, just give me the book. Agatha, I don't think you sh- you're you're in you're were you're in a state of shock. This 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 man meant something to you. I don't think you should have this. I think you should you should clear your mind. You I think do this is something ju- else. I I don't think you understand. Like this is a dangerous book. Okay, as you keep pulling, let's do another strength check <laughs> to see who can drag the book away from the other Ooh. person. Uh uh, fit, well, 52 out of 60. Yeah. 70 out of 40. <laughs> yeah, so you manage to pull the book out of your, out of, uh, uh, sorry, Agatha manages to pull the book out of Marion's hand. Um, mm-hmm. What would you want to do with said book? Um, what, uh, what page is it open to on the book? Okay, so um, you look I down at it. Well, yeah. I mean, you're not really sure, like, 
it's around somewhere in the middle of the book yeah. as you were flipping through it and I stuff was, like I was that. Just look and see. Just whirl, weird swirly symbols and stuff. It's like something when, like an optical illusion when you look at something and it makes you a little bit dizzy and stuff like that. But that is the page it's open on. I think in the I, I, my curiosity gets the better of me, okay. and I take a good hard look at the page in the book. Like, good hard read. Like, see if I can decipher anything. Would that be an occult or... Um, do you have Cthulhu Mythos? Like, I have 4%. Yeah, first off, you would roll Cthulhu Mythos. Okay. No, that's a 61. Okay, then you could go ahead and roll an occult. Oh, that's a 99. Yeah, so uh, two fails. No, you see, it just seems to be like make you dizzy, make you feel a little bit nauseous. You don't really seem to be getting anything out of it. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because basically the Cthulhu Mythos role was for the way the world or the universe really works mm-hmm. to try to figure it out, and then the occult role is for the the wrong beliefs generally that mankind has that might be based in some measure of truth. Um, to try to make sense of it. And since they were both failed, it's really just gibberish. You're just sort of like, ugh, this is a crazy person's. Because you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. I think in my frustration, Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to find that page with the drawing of the house, and I want to prove to her, because I had seen something in that book. I saw the window, the the movement of the curtain i thought there was somebody inside the house looking back at me Mm -hmm. and i just want to prove to her that there's something dangerous and i want her to see that page and see if she sees okay so it's so it's like the first page is the creepy realistic drawing of this small house and and casual glance it seems to be oh it's a nice picture of a house but there's something creepy about how it's drawn and there's an address underneath yeah while she's doing that i'm gonna i'm gonna say to her Look, Agatha, we have an obligation to find items that are dangerous for for the for other to be out in the world, to be out in the public. If, if Albert Gall possibly has some of these, has several of these, he's most likely very tightly connected to the book we were supposed to remove from the Chapel of Contemplation. Our only lead right now is his journal. We could be saving any number of people's lives and minds by removing these items from from the, the popular world. We have to use this book to, to find where they are. And I'm going to slam the book back down mm-hmm. on the page with the house. Sure. And I'm going to be like, this is only information that you need. And this is, this is still even dangerous. Like yesterday, I saw something fucking looking back at me. There's no need to, so there's no need for that language. Looking back at you in a drawing? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to respond to this. Uh, yeah. yeah, so basically as you slam the book down and you're showing the page and Marion, of course, she, it, it, it looks like it, it is a nice sketch. Um, but like I said, there's something off-putting about it. He's an off-putting man. Yeah, there's, he's an off-putting man. It's really a little bit hard to tell. Um, and you seem to be, you know, there's a little bit of a heated discussion between you. Um, all of a sudden, uh, Agatha, you feel sort of like a static electricity shock from the book. I just drop it. Well, you already had it. Oh, I, 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 I you had it yeah, slammed yeah, down, yeah. but you had your hands on it. But you yeah. get this shock, and you pull your hands away. Yep. And then it's the pages start flipping mm-hmm. backward and forward, and that little arc that's created from the pages going. It seems like the symbols rise up. Does it feel like there's wind in the room that's it making it really, blow? It doesn't Ooh. really feel like there's wind in the room. But it feels like you ever, um, like a high pressure zone? You ever feel that, oh. you know, before a storm hits? Oh, like the, oh, yeah, I like the pressure. No, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, the yeah. ozone. Yeah, it's chain, weird. Like it's, it's indecipherable a... and it's the 20s. Just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it's magic. I don't Fine. know. Fine. <laughs> you know what I Things mean? Things beyond our contemplation. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there's a place to go figure that out. <laughs> the chapel, I might say. Um, and it starts flicking back and forth, and it seems like the lights start flickering in, in the room. <clears throat> um, and your boat seem to be a little bit transfixed by the symbols and stuff rising up from the pages of the book. You know what I mean? On like the arc of the pages mm. flicking back and forth. And are, think- they, are, are they written in... Um, 
Like, like do, they, do they look like the same symbols that were inside the book, or are they different? Um, for a split second before potentially it all goes to hell, <laughs> um, as you see the symbols rise up, um, it seems like they don't really look like, they seem more decipherable to a point. Just a quick thing, like a combination, like the way it's written, pages overlap pages and symbols overlap symbols creates a more decipherable thing. Oh. Um, but that's sort of besides the point at yeah. the moment as you both need to make a will power <gasps> roll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Agatha. Could it oh, no. go any worse? Oh no. Oh, no. Actually, you can roll worse. I'm insistent, if nothing else. I have a 94 out of 70. Oh, okay. 69 out of 65. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, so. We're all gonna die. You hear, like, We're all the, gonna die. You hear, like, the sounds in your minds of, like, uh, like thunder, like the word clapping may be coming from outdoors. Okay. Um, and all of a sudden, uh, Marion, you notice that Agatha is speaking, sort of like saying weird what? gibberish. But then at the same moment, as is it, just weird gibberish coming out, um, you notice that you are also. Speaking this weird gibberish, <laughs> um, as you both sort of notice each other, um, sort of at the same time, just your eyes start rolling up, and then everything goes black. Oh God! Back to Amos and Althea in the basement. Uh, Cadbury um, is just there, and he's nah. Is there anything you'd like to? There's nowhere we can go to follow up on what happened to that poor man on the uh, stone table, eh? Uh. And Cadbury looks at him and says, oh, yeah, uh, actually, I do have my journals from uh, the war, which I have locked up in the trunk, and I can go upstairs. I'm going to have a rest first, and then I might take a look through. Maybe maybe there's something I'm forgetting with a little bit more information that, uh, about what this. If it could help with Simon in this situation, I mean, I don't see why not. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, if that's okay. Uh, ma'am, I'll quickly uh, go upstairs, take a nice nap, and uh, do some research. I mean, it's been a while since I've done some research, you know. It's nice to feel useful. Cadbury, you're always useful. Yes, yes, I know, ma'am. And he sort of scurries away. Okay, he just scurries away. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. <sighs> um, so now it's just Amos, Althea, and uh, Simon's uh, like body. Our uh, friend Simon. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Right. All right, Amos, you said you had something you needed to talk to me about. And while he's doing that, I'm going to walk over to a cabinet and pull out a bottle of something or other and, and a couple of glasses. <laughs> I put down one cup of coffee, coffee near her and I'll keep the other one with me. Excellent. Um, actually, I was hoping to ask a... Uh, I mean, it's not a weird question. It's just, you know, take it as a... You're a medical professional, correct? I like to think that I am. Perfect. Um, I would like to ask uh, that I receive some kind of a medical physical examination. At least my temperature, maybe more if there's anomalies. Um, yeah, I, I can do that if that's what you'd like. Sure, we can right. we can definitely do that. Um, I'll just take a little swig of whatever I had in the glass and put it down and just say... The uh, finest whiskey. Go ahead and um, hop Literally. up on the table there. <laughs> I do so. And uh, I'll go get some things like a thermometer... And stuff like uh, that. Would that be an oral? Yes, <laughs> an oral for the yeah, ear no. thermometer, or uh, we still the fun type. We haven't uh, <laughs> listen for that kind of fun type. You either have to be friends for a super long time or total strangers, and we are neither. So, where's your medical professionalism? Okay. Oral thermometer. <laughs> There's people in the room with the mercury in it, sleep, but so still. it's super safe. Yeah, drink this mercury first. <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. Okay, Done. fair enough. So okay. uh, you, Amos, yeah, yeah lies I'll down. Uh, take his temperature. And, you know, okay. Take a take a listen to his heart. Listen to his heart. <laughs> like what kind of stethoscopes? Okay, so what are you doing first? I'll take his temperature because that's what he specifically brought up. Okay, so um, you put the thermometer uh, mm -hmm. under his tongue. Yeah, I guess. Um, and you start getting some other stuff together. Um, 
And then you notice, actually, could I have um, you both make a listen check? Okay. Uh, no, that's like 70 out of 20 for me. Oh, hey, hey, hey! I'm gonna go with that. It's 21 over out of 63. Don't forget to put the tick there. <gasps> um, uh, listen, um, Althea, as you're just going over to get a couple of other mm-hmm. things, um, now, of course, because you're doing the check on them, um, do you change your attire at all? Or are you? No, um, I don't see any need to. I mean, we're just doing some basic things for checkup. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I put on like my medical apron and stuff like that, but um, does it actually say Wednesday on it? No. No. Oh. <laughs> but it has stripes, right? It does have stripes. <laughs> <laughs> on on Wednesdays we wear stripes. <laughs> Colorful, I say. With well, the you know, under my stripes help hide stains and such, right? It's true. Jesus. Just the smell of bleach. Patterns, you know. <laughs> Patterns. All right, anyway, yeah, so no, I'm still wearing, like, my... Okay, so, yeah, as, a, yeah, Roughly, as you come yeah. over and you uh, take a thermometer, of course, at this moment, um, you don't hear anything, Althea, but Amos, you hear... Um, well, first thing you both see, the lights are flickering a little bit down here, which is quite common in this time era. I mean, there's a lot of disruption and stuff like that, but it's not super common, especially up here. This place is fancy. But Amos, you hear weird... the sound of, like, singing coming from upstairs it just seems a bit strange but this like uh, loud singing seems to be coming from upstairs um, you seem to be really tuned into it maybe because your senses seem to be a bit tuned up a little bit lately hmm I take the thermometer out do you hear that is there singing going on in the house it's a little louder than, than your record player usually goes uh I don't I don't hear anything does it sound Odd, or, uh, or other than the fact that they're singing, I can hear across. You can't really pick out any words. It just seems more like a tone, or a, you know what I mean, an inflection to the sound, right. like the beat of it. Um, I'm not. You're not really sure. It just it does. It makes you feel strange. Like it's it's weird. Um, okay, maybe we'll pick this up in a second here. And I put the thermometer down and I boogie it upstairs. Okay, fair okay. enough. Um, he leaves. I'll pick up the thermometer and look at see if it was in if he had it in his mouth long enough to get a reading. Yeah, um, quite cold. Um, his his temperature. I'm not going to specifically people get into exactly what his temperature is, but um, yeah, it seems to be in the stages of uh, hypothermia. Level of um, cold. Well, that's um, not normal. As I go back to Amos, as he's running up the stairs. Um, and uh, you, as you get up to the top of the stairs, it, it sounds like less like, I mean, chanting is music in a certain way, but it's more, um, it's in a language you don't really know. And the voices sound familiar, but you're not entirely sure because it seems a bit guttural. But this it's just that weird. Familiar. Yeah, yeah, from my nightmares. It uh, seems to be coming from the BBR, the breakfast ballroom. I take a look in, and what do I see? So as you run on down the hall quickly, t- and you uh, look into the BBR. Oh God, it's going to be like spills gullet all over again. <laughs> as you look on in, you notice that um, the lights seem to be flickering um, in here, um, and you can see what's really uh, disconcerting to you is over at the table. Um, the journal is in the middle of the table and it seems like the pages are flicking and Agatha and Marion seem to be leaned back in their seats with their heads back and uh, it seems like they're, even from this distance um, that their eyes are rolled up in the back of their heads and their boats seem to be chanting and their voices are mingling together even though it sounds somewhat like them it doesn't fully sound like them Okay. Yeah, it just seems really creepy. Uh, so my, my, uh, yeah, okay, my, there's a coat hanger in the foyer, correct? Correct. So I, I would have my coat there, and so I usually have my, my camera strapped under my arm, kind of like a, like a sawed off shotgun sort of thing, like sure. underneath my coat. So I've got that with my coat. I'm gonna grab my camera. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not gonna save us. I know this looks <laughs> dickish. <laughs> What You're a friend! Ch- You're chanting! Shut up! You don't know nothing! <laughs> I grab the camera, and I make sure the flash is on it. 
Yes, of course you do. Yeah, I make sure the flash is on it. I'm going to sneakishly go in there. My gun is also sneakishly. sneakishly. Good word. Gonna slide in, and I'm going to. And I'm not trying just to take a picture of you two chanting assholes, although that's a nice side benefit. Pixar didn't happen. The uh, go on my 1920s Instagram. <laughs> no, I'm going to flash the room with the flash bulb and see if that snaps them out of it. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. So we're, I'm just going to start off quickly you at You dicks. This. I'm trying to save you without shooting you. I'm going to start this off quickly at the start. Uh, there, there would be no role required oh, to take to take a... I suppose that makes sense. I mean, you're your experienced photographer. <laughs> but just as you go and grab the camera, I mean, everything seems to be a little bit tense. Everything seems to be a little bit flowing at the moment. Yeah. Um, as you step into the BBR... <laughs> <laughs> As you step into the breakfast ballroom, uh, one thing you do notice is the corners of the room seem to be dark and shaded as if the room seems to be smaller than normal. You're not really sure why, um, but of course that would be of secondary concern. Yeah, not but really it, it seems strange much, as you walk in and you can feel like the static electricity in the air, like this pressure in the air um, as you raise up your camera mm -hmm. with the flash and you take a picture. Um, something you do notice seems a little bit strange. And just as it flashes, you do notice something, Amos. It seems like um, similar to when you were in another part of the house and you took a picture and you could see like a shadowy outline. In this room, um, there seems to be a pile of like vaguely humanoid shaped shadowy outlines. Maybe the servants no one seems to have noticed, ah. but no. Um, All your servants shadowy, But it's only for a split second. Of course, just as the flash goes. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can see these. When, when I see that, I will kind of release the camera and let it just fall on the strap on my neck and go, ah. Uh. Yeah. Um, but also at this point, um, that flash does seem to work. Okay. As, yeah, uh, suck it, <laughs> friend. As Agatha and uh, Marion, you both um, seem to startle <gasps> awake slightly. I jolt forward immediately after there. they blink. I slam the book shut and I tuck it under my arm. Okay, so, um, you, uh, they seem to just snap out of it, and the first thing you guys, uh, uh, Marion and Agatha notice as you sort of snap out of it and come to your senses, um, number one is, you don't remember anything about, um, the book situation. No. You don't remember it flickering, you don't remember seeing each other's eyes goes, last thing you remember you were sitting down arguing about the book. That is sort of like right. the point that you're at. But just as you're sort of coming to your senses, you see Amos lunge forward out of nowhere, slam the book shut, and g pull it back and stuff it under his arm. And let's What go. the hell are you doing? Amos, what, what are, are you, you doing? doing? <laughs> Jeez, that's almost like it was practice. I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not the one chanting satanic rituals with my eyes roll back in my head. The hell are you doing with the book? What are you talking about? Oh, what am I talking about? What, 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 talking are you about? what is you doing with the book? I'm keeping it away from your, you two. Why? Obviously. What? Oh, man. Uh, what, what is wrong I came in with here, you? and the two of you were chanting something fierce. What? You had your eyes roll back in your head, and, well, that seemed a little weird, and now I've got the book on America. That's so, impossible. Amos, oh, I think we impossible. would remember that. Yeah, because that's totally the weirdest thing that's happened in the past two weeks. No, I'm not saying things that haven't, haven't been weird, but I'm saying we, I think we would have noticed. I, you know what? You know what? This is this is ridiculous. We have to get rid of this book. This is stupid now. Okay, well, that, that I'm not going to do. What we're going to do is we should call Mr. Black have him take this thing and properly dispose of it, or at least deal with it in a way that we can still address whatever information's in here without you two going all chanty on us. That's probably no, the first sensible no. thing you said We're all day, but not sensibly. Now. We're gonna take, and I'm gonna actually go for Amos, and I'm gonna try and take the book. Okay, fair yeah, enough. No. So you're gonna try to uh, grapple Amos to get the book away from him, where he's, yes. right? So it's going to be, and uh, Amos, what would your reaction be? Uh, either to step away or just just push her and keep her away from the book. It's tucked like under my arm. So uh, would it like to be a maybe dodge out of the way? Yeah, I'll try dodging first. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna do a dodge versus a fighting brawl. Fighting brawl. Fighting brawl, because that also flows as grappling. Because you want to get a hold of the book that Amos has on him. 
Oh, okay, I see where it is. Correct? Yep. Okay. Okay. Oops. Uh, uh, 71 out of 25. Two. <laughs> what? Two percent. Oh, 22. <laughs> no. Yeah, man. But a tick next to dog. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, so Agatha, as you sort of stand up because you're a little bit off-centered, a little bit um, after snapping out of whatever. whatever. Um, disoriented is the word I'm looking for. You jump forward to try to reach over at Amos to get the book back from him, and he just deftly steps to Doink. the side from you. You're standing right next to the table. Oh, okay. And, and uh, Amos is just a little bit off the table, Mary, and you're still sitting down. I'm going to grab my cup my cup of coffee and throw it at Amos. Oh, wow. Do I notice her about uh, to do that? Yes, I don't believe she's stealthily trying to do it. I believe you're... Oh, no, oh, I'm not. I'm okay. just grabbing Agatha, what are you a cup doing? of coffee. And I'm okay. not going to even listen to you. I'm just trying to stop her. Cup. What the fuck? Okay. So it'll be a throw skill. I'll now, try but, okay, so that. it'll be a throw skill for Agatha. Okay. It'll be a fighting brawl okay. skill for Marion, <laughs> and I will ask Amos to dodge yep. if the cup actually starts heading in your direction. That's fair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 90 out of 25. I don't stop her. Uh, well, that's a 35 out of 20. So, so we don't even need to go to dodge <laughs> because she failed her throw. Oh, so this All is right. the that sequence of events and how it happens. Okay. Um, uh, Agatha, you reach down to grab your mug to lift it up. Mm -hmm. uh, Marion noticed this. You try to reach over to the table to grab her arm so she doesn't lift the mug up, but uh, Agatha notices this in her fit of rage. Ooh. She slides to the side and then whips it over at Amos. But what the, the hell? But the issue is um, that Marion reaching for it still screwed up your shot somewhat, so it just flows. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just fl flows out to the side. Okay. Just misses him completely. Although, was it still full of coffee? It was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Overflowing. Got waste. I've got my hand like kind of on my gun in case she gets more violent. I I'm under the impression this has something to do with like direct influence from the book, and I don't know how mm -hmm. crazy she's going to get. So the hand is on the gun. I'm like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> Agatha, we, we can we, stop. Stop. We can we can talk about this. What are, what's going on? But it does seem as both Amos and Marion are trying to talk to Agatha. <laughs> As you threw the mug, your gaze shifted over to the door, the entrance to the breakfast ballroom. Right. Um, and you see, uh, actually, make me a spot hidden roll. Okay. That's a 14 out of uh, 66. That's why you're going crazy. That's why you're way too hot. Put a, put a tick, Stop seeing shit! Put yeah. a tick next to spot hidden. Just yep. blind, um, it's fine. You notice... Um, seems that to was be, an extreme, too. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Uber transfixed. Why would you say as, that? As you notice um, what appears to be a shadowy figure um, in ooh. the doorway, and it seems to just... It seems to be low. It's really hard to pick out. Um, step out of the door frame seems to be like walks away from the door frame into the hall next to the BBR. The breakfast bar. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I my okay. My attention is going to shift from getting the book now to this thing, whatever oh, it wow. is. Um, is there something I can pick up as a weapon? Um, well, I mean, it's a breakfast table, so there would be uh, knives and forks. I'm gonna pick up a knife. Okay, fair enough. And I'm going to run out okay, and follow this thing. <laughs> okay, so what happens, uh, Amos and Marion, is you're questioning um, Agatha. All of a sudden, she reach, She seems transfixed from something behind you, reaches over, grabs a knife <laughs> from the table. I pull out the gun. It doesn't really seem like Agatha notices as she just runs past you, not towards you at all, so you don't need to shoot her. But, uh, <laughs> the gun don't shoot no, no, but she runs right by you and seems to be running out the door. Is there anything you would like to be saying? I'll put Agatha? the gun back, by the way, as soon as I see her. Okay. Nope, I'm actually not. I'm just going to run out. No she, explanation needed. She grabs a knife and just <laughs> bolts. Agatha, where are you going? I follow her. Okay. I, you were, the, what the fuck? And I just turn around, and, I, and as I turn to follow, I yell, Althea, they've gone nuts! Okay, so I'm going to go back to Althea for a second. <laughs> um, I am going to require, because we're, it's a little bit soundproofed at the hospital for some reason, I am mm -hmm. going to require a listen roll to hear what's going on. So that is a 19 out of 20%. Uh, put a tick next to listen. Okay. Yeah. 
as you hear a little bit of a commotion coming from upstairs. A little bit of a commotion. <laughs> you you uh, hear um, people calling, Agatha, wait, or whatever, and stomping of boots. And you hear Amos' voice calling out to... Uh, um, to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so what would you like to do? You hear that down there? Um, so when this was happening, I was kind of leaning on the other table, drinking mm-hmm. a little bit of whatever was in the bottle I pulled out of the cabinet, <laughs> kind funny. of looking at Simon going, what are you? <laughs> and the one thing you do see He's dead. Notice <laughs> is uh, you think it's just a trick of the light mm-hmm. down here because um, the lights are still flickering a little bit mm-hmm. here. Um, there's a slight smirk. It seems like there's a slight smirk, and then you blink, and there's no smirk at all. But it just seems maybe your mind's playing tricks on you. But what would you like to do from hearing your name being called from okay. upstairs? Um, uh, I'll swallow down the last of whatever's in that glass and go, what the hell is happening now? And just leave and, like, saunter my way upstairs <laughs> because... Okay, yeah. so you head on up to the stairs. She um, saunters. Now yep. we're into a little bit of a chase scenario, but it's a really of a short-term chase, so I'm not going to get into making it too complicated. I just want to know, Agatha, what is your movement rate? <laughs> My movement rate is nine. Uh, uh, Amos, what is your movement eight. rate? Eight. Also eight. Uh, Marion is eight. And Althea, when you get involved, what is your movement rate? Eight. Oh, <laughs> Agatha is super quick. Why are we chasing the fast one? <laughs> so, it's, yeah. so it seems, Marion, as you started running right away, you're a little bit behind Agatha as she's running down this hallway. Um... You notice that she, uh, Agatha is gaining more ground, just a little bit at a time, but she's moving quite quickly. Uh, and Amos, of course, you notice um, you're around the same distance from uh, Agatha, uh, from Marion, that Marion is from Agatha, if that makes sense. Can we see whatever it is she's chasing? Uh, no. No, you don't we really see anything you're running. I'm telling you, she got nuts. All you see is me with a knife. Agatha, <laughs> stop! She, just <laughs> fucking nuts. But Althea... Um, as you are all running along, um, Althea, as you open up the door to the main hallway from the entrance, you just notice, uh, Amos, you notice this because Marion's already just moved past that door chasing after Agatha. You notice Amos running. Yep. What, what, what's going on? What? The ladies read from the book that went crazy. Now one's running away with a knife down the hallway. Come on. Minutes. It's been ten minutes. I just put my arms up in the air. I'm like, don't let the fucking die. All right, and I'll take Chase after him. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, Agatha, as you're coming along and you turn around a corner, so it seems like the hallway is uh, turning because there's so it's weird. This house. I don't know how many times I've said that, but it seems like the way the hallways run and everything else. But you seem to come to a corner, and as you turn around the corner at the end of this hall, maybe around 40, 50 feet you would guess. Um, There's a window that faces to the grounds. We're on the first floor, yeah? You are on the first floor. Okay. Although something to remember is on some of these older houses, the first floor, depending on the window you look at, there could be an embankment, even on the first floor, especially in these large estates, it could be a bit further. Yeah, she has an entire hospital in the basement. You might as well be on the third floor. So you might might be ground level. It could be, it just depends. Okay, okay, fair enough. But the one thing is, um, you notice seems to be that shadowy figure you saw seems to be on all fours. Okay. And it's hard to pick out, but it's more like smoky and shadowy. Okay. But it looks to have what appears to be tendrils from what would be the head. It looks like a large cat, but with like tendrils coming out. Samael, is that you? Um, but I mean, that's just the shape of it. It seems to be fairly large. But you just notice this mm-hmm. as it jumps and smashes out the window overlooking the grounds and disappears out of view. As you're... Have the rest of us turn the corner to see it jump out the window, or we just hear a smash? Um, no, so you just hear a smash, but I'm just going to... Yeah. For Agatha, you had stopped momentarily, and Marion, you are right behind her, maybe a foot or two, but I'm Agatha, would you be taking off toward the window? Yes. Okay, would you be... Mm. Yeah. Still chasing yeah. her, yeah. Because you come around the corner, you almost run into her, mm. and then you're shocked ah. for a second, and then Agatha takes off again. No, Agatha. And you take off after her. Yeah. Um. So you. I Ag- swear to God, if I get stabbed again. So right Agatha, you run over to the window, um, Marion, as you're coming up behind, um, and now, 
From the corner, which was around 40 feet away, this is where Amos and Althea sort of come to that corner. And as you're looking down, you can see Agatha at the window and Marion right behind her. But Agatha, as you look out the window, one of the first things you notice is it's dark out. Now, remember I said we started this game at breakfast. It should be daytime. You can see storm clouds. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, rolling in. I mean, it's not not dark like night, but like grimy. Like overcast? overcast. Yeah, like really yeah. overcast, Nickelodeon-ish type of way. You know <laughs> what I mean, people. Um, but as you look out the window, you notice the way the faces on the grounds is to your left is the large hedge maze. Okay. Just off to your left. And the reason I'm bringing that up is you see the shadowy mm. figure enter into the entrance into the hedge maze. Okay. So <laughs> So when I run up to the window, yeah. I'm going to actually drop the knife and I'm going to actually stand in the frame of the broken window. Oh, you're going to hop up? I'm going to hop up, yeah, and stand in the frame of the broken window and I have my hands around the sure. the frame. But at this point because that takes a second, oh, okay. I'm going to have Marion catch up to you. Oh, okay. Cuz she was right behind you. Right. Okay. I got to stop. You could get hurt. I'm just gonna reach, like, I'm gonna like reach up, but not quite touch her yet. Okay, um, Agatha, you quickly noticed that Marion seems to be reaching up to grab you. What would you like to do? I'm going to kind of look at her in the frame, mm -hmm. and then I'm just gonna jump out the window. I'm gonna try and grab her. Okay, fair enough. Um, I would consider that sort of like a grapple. Okay. So that would be a fighting no. brawl. Um, <laughs> So, base, I'm just going to do it based on her role of trying to grab a hold okay. of you. Okay. Um, actually, uh, roll me a dodge. A dodge? Yeah, because as you're sort of jumping out of the way. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to uh, that's uh, that's a 20 out of 28. It's an 81 out of 25. Yeah. So, even though Marion um, failed in the grab, you deftly sort of, the way you jump out is to avoid being grasped. You know what I mean? Oh, like, like you, I moved out of the way Yeah, you enough? moved out of the way, even though she was going to miss anyway. <laughs> um, that, that's how that goes. But I do need you to make a dexterity check to oh. see how you land. Oh, damn. Because as you jump out and you never really took notice, it is around an eight foot drop. Oh, oh, that's good. Uh, well, that's a, that's a 40 out of, 41 out of 50. Uh, 41 out of 50 mm, is yeah. a success. Um, yeah, on, on the dexterity check. Um, as you, land properly mm -hmm. I don't know what else, but not a superhero landing you don't blow out your knees <laughs> but you land so and sort of roll with it which is the proper way to do those things yeah oh parkour as you roll with it and then stand up and I'm assuming you went out the window for a reason Agatha where would you be heading I'm gonna run after the shadow into the thing into the the maze okay yeah. Fair enough. So as you start taking off, I'm going to go back to Marion, really pushing this along here, like the chase sequences. Mm -hmm. uh, Marion, as you look out the window and you can see Agatha deftly land properly and start running what appears to be toward the large hedge maze. I'm going to um, knock out some of the other glass so I don't get cut on it. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to turn behind me and see yep. uh, Althea and Amos. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to go, Althea, get Cadbury. I don't know what's wrong with Agatha, but she's running to, she's running into the yard. And then I'm going to climb up on the uh, uh, window. Do I see where where Agatha's going? Yeah, she seems to be running. Um, there is a little bit of a um, groundkeeper shed um, between the house and the hedge maze. Um, but she seems to be running toward the hedge mage. But the hedge mage. Maze. Hedge mage. mage. <laughs> uh, or some dark nature magic. <laughs> no, um, to the hedge maze. Okay, I'm um, going to climb up on the sill and jump down carefully. And then uh, chase carefully? after her. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, with, with a careful... Yeah, if so you're doing it carefully, it's eight down, foot. I'm just going to say you lower yourself down yeah. properly and you take off. As we're going to go back to um, Amos and Althea, as you notice Agatha just jump out the window while Marion tries to catch her. Um, and then Marion sort of follows suit, but in a less crazy way. Yeah. <laughs> I stutter to a stop. Are you fucking serious? What the hell happened to my window? Oh my god, she's gone nuts. She, she jumped out the window. All right, she's got a knife with... Do I see the knife on the floor? You do see the knife on the floor. <laughs> she, okay, so she doesn't have a knife, but she still jumped out of a fucking window. What the hell happened to my window? She, 
I'm gonna run around to the front. I'm gonna see if I can yell at Cadbury, and I'm gonna try and cut him off with the. Is there another act entrance to the to the maze? Uh, uh I. At, at this point, I want to bring up something very specific, Althea. Um, when it comes to the hedge maze, um, you seem to have maybe at some point when you were a child a bad experience in the hedge maze, but you were so young you can't really remember, but you don't really spend time in it. Um, you think there was other entrances to the hedge maze, but I mean, really, nobody really talks about the hedge maze. But I would, I, I, I would assume there are multiple entrances, but, but we don't. We don't talk about the hedge maze. You mean you lived here your entire life and you do not know how many entrances there are to your fucking hedge maze? Well, it's... It's just... Always been there? Oh, what a life you live. All right, well, then you stay here, I suppose. I'm going to see if Cadbury has got a better answer and I'm going to try and cut him off at the front. And I run down the hallway back towards the foyer yelling, Cadbury! Mm -hmm. As I got the book with me. Fair enough. As uh, Amos takes off. Um, now, very quickly, as Althea, you're looking at the window, I'm going to go back for a second as Agatha. Um, as you're running toward the hedge maze, mm -hmm. is there anything you would like to do? I Is there anything like a... Uh, is there anything I can pick up like a weapon? Well, like a, you do notice um, a groundkeeper shed. Okay, all right. There, um, by the side. And I'm just going to make this a, a luck roll to see if there's anything viable. Okay. Really. Yeah, right. let's, let's make a good luck roll. Okay. Uh, so 30 out of 75? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a hard luck success. Um, you do notice as you're going by that there seems to be, I don't know, uh, maybe a pitchfork? A pitchfork leaning against the shed? <laughs> Just a pitchfork there. God help us. I'm starting a mob, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't give her a torch. Yeah. Okay, I'll wake up the pitchfork. So you grab a pitchfork. <laughs> Agatha is an alienist. This is getting ridiculous. As you run and grab the pitchfork. You sure you're an alienist? She's an alien. <laughs> yeah. You grab Ish. the pitchfork and... Uh... Run into the thing. Oh, I run okay. in... After the thing. So I'm, I'm going to go to Marion's point of view. <laughs> As you lower yourself down, so there's a fair bit of distance between you and Agatha now, you uh, are start chasing her, mm -hmm. but you notice a bit ahead of you where the shed is. She seems to grab a pitchfork. What? And then run off into the hedge maze. Agatha! She's gone nuts! Yeah. You do know this, Agatha, as you're about to enter into the hedge maze, you can see like a weird mist. There's something seems like there's the fog mist. rolling in, like mist rolling in or something. But okay. it seems just in the entrance as you just run on in, I'm assuming. You seem to be not in yep. the right state of mind. Uh, so I'm going to pass that sh that same shed. Okay. I'm just So it's it's really, you, you said that it was getting dark and foggy and, and, or yeah. dark and stormy, sorry? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was stormy. Uh, I'm going to get a flashlight. Is there a flashlight in the garden shed? Ah, uh, that's a fair one. Well, well, let's do a luck roll on that mm -hmm. one as well. That is a 33 out of 50. Okay, you do notice, um, for some reason, I don't know why it's left outdoors in the rain, <laughs> but on like a stump, you know, one of those cut off stumps, like, <laughs> please take me now, okay? <laughs> Only one allowed per character. Uh, you notice what wow. seems to be the old style flashlight I described okay. before, like on a car battery, yeah. this massive battery thing. Yeah, there seems to be a flashlight there. Cool. And if this will take the time, I'm still gonna do it because I feel like I'll need it. Uh, is there also like a shovel? Because it's a garden shed? Well, I actually, I'm not even going to call a luck roll for that. It would make a lot of sense for a shovel just okay. to be there. Because she has a pitchfork. I want something to keep my distance from her. Like, if she That's gets true. close, it's like, Smart. Yeah. Shovel versus away. pitchfork. <laughs> Who will win? So I'll, I'll grab both, and then I'll follow her, and I'm just, I'm like, keep calling after her. Okay, fair enough. Um, and Althea, uh, you notice, um, looking out the window, you see Agatha running to the hedge maze. Running, running. And running. some part of you is like, oh, ugh. Um, but then you see Marion stop at the tool shed and she seems to be supplying herself with like, <laughs> like things. Um, but more importantly, Althea, you hear, you ever have that feeling like somebody's watching you? And you do get that distinct feeling In that somebody's game? watching you. Always. <laughs> so as you take a quick look around, just stepping out of the shadows, um, not ominously, but <laughs> stepping out of the shadows, I don't know how you could say that not ominously. Five or six feet behind you, you see Skeet, mm -hmm. and he sort of just steps out and he's like, 
and he's sort of looking at you and he looks sad like he looks like upset and he's like oh ma'am ma'am she she didn't go she didn't go into that hedge maze did she Thank you for listening to this episode of The Call. Our next episode will air Tuesday, December 31st. In the meantime, Tuesday, December 24th, is the next episode of Spacers, our Starfinder actual playcast. The game system used today was the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition by Chaosium. Music, sound effects, and ambient tracks licensed through Triune Films, Video Copilot, and Sirenscape. You can find all Twisted Gear Studios' podcasts on YouTube, Google Play, Apple Music, and Spotify. Please follow and like Twisted Gear Studios on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Twisted Gear. Your players this evening were Janessa Coles, Lindsay Delansky, Zach Barrett, and Elizabeth Wells. Your audio operator's name was Rob Hickey, and your GM, or Keeper, this evening was Derek Snow. If you happen to be in the Fort Murray area, you can find me at Tavern on Main every Monday at 7.30pm for trivia. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you next time.